So you have been with us since your undergrad in what? When did you commence 20, that? 17. 2017. So what, what was your undergrad? Talk me through it. Uh, so I did BA Honours, uh, Sports Coaching and Sports Development, which I got a first class in. <laughs> Like, Drop that plug in, yeah. <laughs> just couldn't graduate, so we're going to share. Um, and yeah, I I did performing arts at college. I did nothing related to sport. And then one day was like, I had a friend that was on coaching and development. And he was like, that I'd met through the Football Futures programme. And he was like, just come to an open day. Like, come and have a, like, have a look around, see how you feel. And I just fell in love with it from the get-go. I loved just the feel of it. It just felt like home. You know, I loved the fact that, lecturers weren't afraid to check and challenge you yeah and so was it a no-brainer for you to do a post-grad and especially at Solon or were you kind of thinking about other places were you thinking of doing other things what was your mindset originally I was going to do three years and I was going to run away to the states um, but uh, I was hoping you know I wanted to sort of like push myself a little bit so I emailed Will and I was like do you have any practicals that I can come in and just sit and kind of observe like your critiques and stuff and he was like well, why don't you come and help me do the first years he was like you can you know give critique as well and I was like okay and we kind of like we were chatting and he was like what are you doing afterwards and I was like oh I'd love the idea of postgrad but I didn't know if I wanted to do like the development or the master or the management I was like they don't really speak to me as like what I want to go on to do yeah. and he was like, have you not thought about the PE one and I was like eh. I was like I don't want to be a PE teacher and he was like don't have to be my worry was it was going to be like PE teaching PE teaching and it absolutely hasn't you're pretty in control of your own destiny yeah, um which yeah. is really nice just it feels at home as cheesy as that sounds it absolutely just feels at home I love the city I love the uni you know it's such an enjoyable three years yeah oh nice and how do you feel like undergrad and obviously currently in your postgrad how do you think it's kind of prepped you for whether it's coaching whether it's PE whether it's kind of what you're doing abroad how do you think it if it has prepped you for that I think definitely like just the whole throwing myself in no matter what like the way that the lecturers are like well just throw yourself into it what's the worst that can happen you fail but you get some really cracking feedback yeah um so I definitely think that's been um that was a massive learning point for me in terms of going into industry and yeah you might fall down five or six times but you're gonna have such good feedback to then come back five times as strong yeah um, which is definitely I think made the jump into industry a little bit easier um I was kind of like around the edges for a little while um with bits so you know I was doing with the FA and with Hampshire FA but actually throwing myself fully into kind of working alongside people and working alongside the people I work kind of am currently collaborating with in the states um that obviously played like Olympic level and all these really scary people and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> um which has definitely come from just lecturers being like try it take the risk you know yeah give it a whack like would you say then the like from your career so far is that been a massive challenge for you kind of taking that first step and someone having to nudge you like is that a particular highlight of a challenge almost I think so yeah I was really really shy growing up I was like horrendously shy and my mum used to get so frustrated with me um and like coming to uni and having to be like on my own and stuff and um having to really kind of push myself having the lecturers that I knew would keep me accountable if I weren't going to push myself yeah they were going to push me um which I'm now at the point where I push myself twice as hard um and I always have lecturers being like don't don't and I'm like but I know what I can achieve again just um definitely them pushing me to kind of push myself and to actually believe in myself was a massive thing that probably wouldn't have happened if I didn't come to Solon um to be honest are there any other kind of um, particular challenges along the way you can think of that have moulded your journey a bit? I think it's quite an obvious one, but I think being definitely being a woman in football um, mm. has been quite a quite a big challenge to kind of jump over. Um, I can't tell you the amount of times I've been asked if I know the offside rule or if I brought my handbag or people like that just have no right to to be anywhere near it. Absolutely, and I think that's what. It's also been a massive, massive driver is actually yeah. those people exist in the female game. So yeah. I would work twice as hard to ensure that it's not going to affect someone to the point where they drop out. How, so how do you um, approach that with your with the girls you coach? So you coach a 16s team, right? Yeah. How do you approach that with them? Because no matter, I think no matter what 
uh, kind of level of football you're playing, you're always going to have people kind of throwing all sorts at you, aren't you? And it, how do you approach it with them when they ask those questions? I'm very tongue in cheek and I'm very honest with them and I always have been. Um, mm. And I've said, I was like, you know, it, it's going to roll you up. I was like, but <clears> use, like, use it internally. I was like, if they've made a comment, go out there and show them why they've made a comment. Mm. Go in to win that ball, win that ball with everything you've got. Um, but I also said to them, I was like, don't be afraid, you know, to speak, challenge it, to say, well, actually, why is that funny? Mm. Pull it back out. You know, we had a couple of instances in the year where things have been said and um, one of my 16s was like, actually, that's that's not funny. And I was like, oh, wait, in the corner. <laughs> I was like, queen. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, trying to definitely instill with them, same with my campers. I was like, absolutely, you are well in your own rights to ask someone why why yeah. they've decided to say that and why um which is something I obviously never got um it's been a massive part of my ideology yeah oh, it's a shame that it kind of and I think to some extent a, a lot of people go through it don't they? it's just a shame that they're the things you have to kind of learn from but ultimately it makes you bulletproof doesn't it to some things you know kind of getting that message across isn't it but <laughs> Let, let's flip it then. What's, what have your highlights been kind of pre-Solent, at Solent, um, up to this point? God, that's such a hard one. Like, there are so many <laughs> random things that come into my brain. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be football. It can be like camp. It can be, I don't know, <laughs> like you did performing arts at college, you said. I mean, <laughs> these are all things that mould you, I guess, aren't they? Yeah, performing arts was so much fun. I um, absolutely loved it. I danced until I was like 18, 19 anyway. Um, and I was torn between going to drama school and coming to Solon. Um, you know, really similar similar jobs. You know, it was so much fun. I owe a lot to performing arts. It definitely kind of, um, you know, I use it a lot in my kind of coaching, my playing, just me as a human interacting with people. Um, I think it also makes you really, really personable to kids. Mm. I used to play like 90 songs when we did our SIP. And I had a full routine to like spice up your life at one point and you know, it, yeah. things like that. And the girls would be like really getting into it. And the boys that were in my SIP group were like, will you stop? So from your kind of experience up to this point, are there any any tips you'd give younger, I guess, younger football coaches, younger football players or PE teachers that are looking to do that a similar journey to yours? Any advice for them? Yeah, just network. Speak to as many people as you can ask questions i i've reached out to so many people on linkedin and i've been like i see you're doing this job role how did you get there where did you start please tell me all of this <laughs> actually from that i've networked with some really wicked people that have said to me when you finish your masters give me a shout we'll see if we can arrange something you know um i had a message the other day from someone i'd literally messaged and been like oh i've seen you've done this how did you get there mm. and he was like we're writing you know a job role for a newly qualified teacher do you want to put your cv in like send it to me now i was like mm. so there is absolutely no harm in networking and same with just throw yourself into whatever comes your way like obviously don't take on too much but I've got a very big motto of never say no all of these things just make you so much stronger yeah just network throw yourself into anything you know and always ask for feedback yeah nice um so from your postgrad what are you what are your goals for the course and kind of where do you hope it it leads you whether that's a job, whether that's kind yeah. of just progression along the pathway, like what are you? You said you don't want to go into PE teaching, right? Have you still got that mentality? Or I'd love to go into teaching. I love working with kids anyway. Um, and actually, this new club of teacher role would have been at college. Yeah. Um, something I'd never considered. And you know, like I said, anything that comes my way, I will give a good whack at. Um, and actually, now that I've thought a little bit more about it, I probably would like to have a go at teaching. Um, I definitely think it would have to be sort of football centred. Yeah. But, you know, um, I have so many different avenues that I kind of want to go down. Um, obviously, I do want to stay on to do a PhD. Um, definitely, like, now realising that I do have the capability to do it. Um, so I'd love to stay on for a PhD. Again, love to go into teaching, but I think my heart will always, always sit in football. Um, yeah. And I do kind of just want to make the biggest difference I can. Um, I'd like to kind of drive forward the women's game as hard as I can just you know to make it so much more accessible to you know everyone like growing up I really struggled to find a women's team like a girls team um, I was playing ladies football at 16 because <laughs> there just 
in any under 18s teams I'm yeah. getting absolutely battered <laughs> um, so I'd love to definitely football will always be like the forefront of it all um but I'd like to try and outdo myself with grades as well because I like to I like to always kind of up um so definitely that's where you know just trying to do as well as I can you know with the postgrad um let's go on to sort of PhD and use that as a way to just make the biggest ripple in you know the, the football water I can yeah nice nice so how, how have you found the kind of jump to postgrad studies and still having to fit that in and around life and what challenges may have come kind of that way are the you've like you said your lecturers have been pretty good are they flexible with it do they understand your workload and how's that been yeah obviously the lecturers are brilliant and stuff like if you know ever need anything they are still you know always there yeah. um which is you know it's cracking and I do understand when they're like well you know obviously this has to come first um overwork which is fine you know understand what I have definitely found it a big jump yeah um, obviously like it's just that little bit hard and they do expect that a little bit more like I was reading through the assignment briefs and I was like, <laughs> um but I was very concerned that it was going to be very much you're on your own when you go up to kind of postgrad but actually still more than happy to offer feedback it's not kind of as safety net but it is definitely um they're still there if you need it and there was a lot more dependence on kind of you've got to go away and do the research and you've got to do the reading which I quite enjoy I quite like a good bit of reading um but it's definitely been um and it's been hard like with COVID like with the remote learning and stuff trying to have debates and stuff via zoom and people are cutting in and cutting out and people's yeah. life dropping um so have you so we mentioned before that you've got your final projects at the end have you got a topic and stuff sorted for that have you started it like where's where are you at with that yeah so submitted our proposals and stuff um which is great my topic is looking at the intersectionality of race and gender um in sort of media um media portrayal and ultimately how that's kind of influenced on journeys and experiences and then participation um I'm making my life hard and I'm doing cross-culturally I'm looking at the United States and the UK and um, it's obviously quite overt and quite covert racism kind of yeah um layered on top of like women um was massively ignited from my work in the states hearing kind of co-counselors sort of stories and experiences and then obviously all the Black Lives Matter movement and stuff really just ignited all of it um Colin Kaepernick taking the knee looking yeah. at how that was represented and then you look at Premier League footballers taking the knee before every football game and within a space of two three years we've gone from him being absolutely alienated by the media yeah. to it being, um so yeah uh getting there um definitely going to be a mammoth kind of thing but I love a challenge so yeah. and it was I really wanted to really look into what um what kind of sparked your interest for a subject like that was it yeah. the, was it the timing of it or was it already in your head before it was all kind of sparked yeah it when I did my undergrad dissertation I'd looked at um the like the lived experiences and the journeys of female football coaches um looked at obviously kind of like feminism or whether that like had um <laughs> moved football forward and all of those kind of things and it had been brought up by a couple of the girls they'd said well you know this had been said in the media or this is how people think of me and then I kind of was like hmm. like I'd never thought of it before obviously being a white woman and um, I'd never had to kind of endure that I am African but I'm a white African mm. um, and then the women's leadership project actually we were on I think it was a Sunday and they'd mentioned a Black Lives Matter webinar um and they were like yeah it's you know just sign up and it's I think it's like seven or eight um evenings um across the next sort of like three or four months um where we talk about like intersectionality and all of these kind of things that just delve further and um, we did loads of reading looked at kind of Grenfell looked at the background of Grenfell um and just something that I really wanted to kind of learn more about anyway I'm a bit of a sponge like I'll pick up something that interests me and I'll run with it and I'll kind of just learn and learn and learn um, and we'd spoken obviously about race in Kola's uh, contemporary uh, sports issues unit in third year um, and I'd actually looked at Colin Kaepernick taking the knee and that whole kind of like um, compared it to obviously apartheid South Africa which is massive like for me growing up and stuff hearing all about um, to obviously the US and to how it is in England and it kind of just from there like um, everything sort of started slotting together and I was like oh okay and then I spoke to more like to more lecturers and 
this sort of topic just kind of got, got formed um which yeah kind of a lot of things went into it um but it's always been sort of those kind of issues always not I've always really been interested in learning about and kind of understanding like where my capital is and how I can sort of use like what my capital I hold to support other people yeah oh, brilliant love it um so going back to your course lecturers um what's your kind of what's the best thing about them in terms of the course and what drew you to kind of have such a good relationship with them was it their kind of previous experience or kind of like you've mentioned the way they're so approachable their connections have they set you up with people like what's the what's the kind of draw with them I think the lot that the really nice thing about you know the sports lecturers is there's obviously such vast backgrounds um they all offer something different which is just amazing you know like the networking opportunities that come from them obviously like the banter that comes to them and just they're so engaging as lecturers I can't really put my finger on why but mm. you walk in and you're like oh, I've got like a two-hour lecture or I've got this one and you walk out and you're like just like in mind sort of gone with some of the things that you know they'll draw on and it just it never felt like a chore to learn um it's like kind of undergrad and postgrad have there any been have there been any subjects sorry that you've gone yeah that was that I really enjoyed that module I really enjoyed that lecture or any specific kind of subjects that um like spark your interest throughout your time yeah I'd always loved like the sociological based ones you know I love a good debate so I loved those that would spark them um critical pedagogies as well was something that and like TGFU those kind of ones that spoke about like teaching styles and kind of coaching styles I absolutely loved because it really made me check and challenge my ideology and the way I work but I do think like there wasn't ever a module that I just didn't like um and I do think it's how it was delivered you know that it was something different and there was always different ways of teaching yeah and was there kind of a lot of so obviously there's going to be theory and practical based modules right yeah. was there a good connection between the two obviously we have the new build that you can go into and do do a lot of your practicals like how was that experience being able to kind of go between the two um I obviously I loved the practicals you know I only got to use the new build in third year so I loved the new build you know got very lucky to have practicals in in third year um and was quite gutted I was like can I just can I can I do my degree again like can I come back well, yeah. that's why you're doing your postgrad then. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, might as well. Just going to go through every sports course just <laughs> to get to yeah. use it. Um, but yeah, I was absolutely thrilled, especially with like uh, varsity when we did go over to Bournemouth and go to Chapel Gate, and you'd be like, wow, this is like wicked. Yeah. And then the fact that we had like such like an amazing facility, it was almost like, yep, yeah, see this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, so, what would you? If there, if you've got one, what would you say is your favourite Solent memory to date? I think all of the ones that are flooding to mind now, unfortunately, are me very loudly singing on every bus home from a Wednesday game, from an away game. I sang the whole way home from Cardiff Met, <laughs> and I sang the whole way home from Marshall. <laughs> Mm -hmm. very loudly into a microphone through the whole of the bus and Rafa was just looking at me like do you ever stop yeah sure the bus driver was uh, thinking the same similar lines as well yeah he gave me the microphone at one point and I was like this is a bad idea boss man this is an awful <laughs> idea uh, but yeah a lot of them are probably to do with women's football um just yeah endless fun endless laughs going to Croatia in first year you know as a football team mm. I think it's one of them as well isn't it like you've said before it's diving into things and yeah so many people obviously don't get involved in in the society at, at uni life do they and it's such a big part of it as well as the actual study and absolutely you know like if I always say to Fresh is Fair, anyone that will listen to me, I'm like, come in, <laughs> come talk yeah. to me. Yeah. I'm like, come join football. <laughs> and they're like, but I can't play. I'm like, just join. I'm like, because it's, you just make, I met my best friend on day one of trials in first year and we're still best friends now. Mm. We did the whole of, you know, the whole three years together. We cried through our dissertations and she will be my best friend till the end of time. And yeah. you know, I got that from being on, you know, on a sports team and you when you get to sort of like the committee roles and things like that that are just so much fun and you can actually really have a say and shape a squad um which you know is amazing like the memories I've got from being on you know on a sports team like 
can't really compare. Yeah. You get some, some of the memories you get from it are brilliant, aren't they? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so are there any particular kind of life differences between being a postgrad and an undergrad student, do you reckon? I think the what's the word that the responsibility I think at undergrad um they're a little bit more like not holding your hand but there's definitely a little bit more of like a safety net yeah and you get to postgrad and they're like you got this like you go and it yeah. is definitely scary but you know like they all all the lecturers believe in you um which is you know very sort of settling to know that actually okay well I'm not on my own but I do have to work which again, like, you know, not, that's why not everyone does a postgrad because it is a big step, but it's definitely um, much more responsibility put on your shoulders that you're like, they're like, you've got to go read and you've got to do. But actually, I think that's probably where the best work comes from is yeah. that extra reading that you do, that you find things that, you know, you're like, oh, this is like, you know, yeah. I thought of that before. Um, Absolutely. Um so you said you're you're local anyway, aren't you? You're from Hampshire, right? Yeah. Um, but what do you what do you think is best, or what do you like best about living and kind of studying in Southampton? I just love the city. I couldn't imagine not being here. Um, you know, even just in halls, like you're literally on the doorstep of uni. You're not kind of a million miles from everything. You've got town right in front of you. Obviously, you've got Oceana, which what more could you have? Or <laughs> but I think like. A lot of like people coming to uni are like, oh, but jobs and all this. I've had so many random jobs that I've got through random things. I was I worked at Revsty Cuba, well I still do, when it's open as a samba girl on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. so much fun. So much fun. <laughs> Just hand maracas to people. And you know, things like that, like you've got kind of obviously um IKEA. Yeah. But, you know, and pressures the amount of times we'd walk to IKEA and just wander around for a day. Yeah. You know, feel a little bit homesick, have a little wonder um but it's just such a like a such a wicked city and um, there's so much to do and there's so many different things you know obviously you've got like have a night at switch you know you've got oceana if you love a bit of cheese um, but then you've also got like all the events that switch put on um that partial to a dmb event so i love all of that you know we've had el Row here there's just so much to do um, yeah. and i've got i've visited friends that, that have gone to other unis and i've just been a bit like Really like, I'm <laughs> um you know I don't want to like name universities but it was one of the things that when I came to stuff like came down to sort of for an open day the fact that everything was just there was yeah, yeah no couldn't have imagined being elsewhere makes a big difference actually doesn't it when there's everything's right on your doorstep absolutely yeah and have you ever if you've ever gone to the university have, have they given you help or support or advice when you've needed it Oh yeah, all the time. You know, just having been able to email the student hub and be like, "Hi, <laughs> like, can I have this, please? Can you help?" And yeah. if they, even if they can't help, they'll be like, "Nope, but here's someone that can." And the librarian, what an angel! Like mm. the amount of times that I've just been like, "I can't find anything I need," yeah. and I've sent Kate an email and I've said like, "Really sorry, like this is quite a long list, but can you just at least point me in a direction?" Yeah back within sort of like 24 hours and was like here like bang 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 and just makes such a difference I'm not trolling through books for like 17 hours yeah no, um, yeah oh good and finally I know we've been a while but finally <laughs> uh what do you think you're going to take away from your time from Solent when you do eventually go whenever that may be um oh, did yeah. you make the kind of <laughs> friends and connections and stuff that are going to last forever like what what's your takeaways yeah absolutely like you know first of all like I have made friends that I will have for the rest of my life and like some of the best memories of my life so far have been at Solon um you know I just love the city and even some of you know our lecturers like I've spoken to lecturers that have just sort of are leaving now and I've sort of said I was like I can't put into words how much I want to say thank you for just the support and you know, for making me who I am today, um, absolutely wouldn't be the person I am if I didn't come to Solon.